If you are familiar with bass music production, you probably know the technique where you just take a sine wave and some white noise and distort them together. So just the sine wave and the white noise sounds like this. And if I just distort them quite heavily, I get this kind of sound. And I'm gonna use this sound as the basis for our explosion sound. So after this, I'm just gonna add a filter to cut some of the highs here. I'm gonna compress it afterwards to even it out a bit. Because of this we are losing a bit of low end, but I'm gonna use an equalizer anyways to shape the sound a bit more. And I'm especially gonna boost the lows here. And maybe also boost the highs a bit. Now I also want this to be in stereo. I could use the unison here, but I'm gonna use a delay to create the house effect. So I just set the feedback to zero, mix to 100% and the delay to stereo mode. And I'll just both sides to seconds and then we're gonna delay one side a bit. So now we have this in stereo. And because we're going for an explosion, I want this to be a more percussive sound. So I'm just going to use LFO1 on the levels of the sine wave and the white noise and draw in a shape roughly like this. Also set this to envelope mode. And for what we are going for, it's important to play this at a really low pitch so that we actually get the benefits of what I'm doing with this technique here. Here we get more audible individual hits, essentially. So the last thing in vital in this chain is going to be the reverb. And it's kind of important that it's at this position in the chain, because we are going to use more effects afterwards. And the main sound is going to come from distorting the reverb. So you don't have to use the vital reverb, you can use any external reverb that you want. Just make sure that you place it in front of the distortion. So I'm going to set this to roughly 50%, maybe increase time and size a bit. Mainly we would just want to have some reverb that we can distort afterwards. So now we'd we'll start using an EQ and boost the lows even more. So after this I'm gonna use the drum bus plugin in Ableton. And I'm gonna use it for two things. I'm gonna use it for the distortion here. And I'm gonna use it for the transient shaper. So you can use any transient shaper you have access to and any distortion that you like. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using drum bus. So without the transient shaper, it sounds like this. With the transient shaper, it sounds like this. It just gives it quite a bit more attack. And now the main thing is gonna be the distortion up here. And again, we are gonna distort the reverb now. So this typically sounds ugly and it's also gonna sound quite ugly in this case, but it's the sound that we're going for with the explosion. After this, I'm going to use another EQ and I'm going to cut the highs a bit here. And lower everything but the very lows here. And at the end of our chain, we can use a compressor and compress everything a bit and also, in this case, push it into the soft clip. Now let's just bounce this. And the next step now is to start layering this with other sounds. So you could go back and create more variations of this by using different reverb settings, different EQ settings, different distortions. Another option is to just layer the sound with itself, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to duplicate it and create a pitch down version of this. Usually this should give us a very interesting tale. So let's see how this sounds. Both of them together, I'm just gonna lower the volume of both. Okay. Maybe don't have this that audible at the end here, because I'm just gonna use the fade out a bit more. So I'm just gonna process both of them together. I can also run them through a reverb again. Now the interesting part starts also when you start layering this with organic recordings. Which is not something you have to do, but organic recordings can really help this to give it a more natural tail. This don't have to be really big sounding recordings because that's what we synthesized. Now we want to add more details to the tail and to the sound overall. So I'm just looking for recordings that have these interesting debris details that you can make audible with compressing it. Maybe this works. And I'm actually just going to use mainly OTT on this. This is going to help to bring the details out here a lot. And maybe an EQ 
queue afterwards because we don't need the low end of this. And let's maybe look for another sound. This could be good as well. I'm actually just gonna copy this on this track. That's a bit too much for this one. So let's see how they all sound. Going on a bit too long for this. Also turn the volume down of these a bit. And we're gonna also put all of this into another group so we can process them together. Still a bit too loud. But as you can see, if you play around with this, combined with the synthesized stuff that we have here and, you know, very random small recordings, you can get very interesting textures for these explosions. So let's bounce this entire sound down. What's also really interesting is if you just pretty much cut the majority of the tail, so it's a really short sound, and then you get a really aggressive sounding layer that you can use for other sounds. And I will probably layer this sound more with uh, some mono sounds because what we synthesize here is in stereo and I would probably want a transient that's in mono. So just, you know, a kick sample or a snare sample or something maybe that you have uh, synthesized with white noise. It's just in mono. So you have a mono sound at the attack that's punching through and then you have all the interesting tail here in stereo.